Before I begin, I would like to thank the committee for accepting this uh, study. I would like to say before I begin that I'm not a geneticist, I'm an ethnographer, so my interest is studying different populations and their customs and their history. And for the purposes of this study, it was threefold. So I studied genealogies, uh, their customs, and genetics. And what, what I will be presenting is the genetics part of the research that I did last year summer in the Dominican Republic, discovering the hidden identity of Los Banileos. The purpose of this study was to confirm a theory based on an anthropologist named Dr. Jean Vicente, who said in one of his uh, interviews with Miriam Herrera Mejia, she said that her grandfather mentioned that the Panin, this town in the Dominican Republic, was founded by Sephardic Jews who came from the Canary Islands. So one of the questions that we always ask is, who is a Jew? And according to Jewish law, a Jew is that person who's been born from a Jewish mother or has converted. Who is a Catholic Christian? According to Catholic canonic law, a Christian is a person who has been baptized. So if you are both, you're considered to be conversant, which was the case of the ancestors of Los Banileos. This is a map of the Canary Islands, uh, in case you didn't know, it's off the coast of Morocco. The biggest island being Santa Cruz de Tenerife. And Lucien Wolf, in his uh, investigation on genealogies and history of those Jews in the Canary Islands, he said that the conversos in the Canary Islands imported Jewish husbands and wives from Lisbon and Madeira, which are uh, Portuguese territories. Here's a map of the maritime routes showing Christopher Columbus's um, four travels to the New World. As you can see, every time that he went towards the New World, he stopped at the islands, Madeira, Canary Islands, Azores, and Cabo Verde. So we can assume that every time he stopped and as he traveled towards the New World, he took on people from those islands. And these are the same routes that were used to travel throughout the entire, let's say, uh, all the way up to the 19th and, and the 20th century. Where is Bani? So Bani is a map of the Dominican Republic. Bani is founded in the south central part of the Dominican Republic, about two hours or one hour southwest of the capital, San Domingo. The method, of, the method that I use in order to study this population was the, what I call the inquisitorial method. So I went through the, inquisi the inquisitorial um, documents and the manuals in Sp from Spain and Portugal, and I formulated a questionnaire of about 70 questions that includes various aspects of, of their lives. Now, I must tell you that the Banilejos today are, for the most part, practicing Catholic. They have no idea about Jewish ancestry, or they don't even, they don't even have a, let's say, um, the desire to be Jewish. That's what makes this uh, interesting, as you will see. I recorded their paternal and the maternal genealogies and compared them to Dr. Valera's genealogical book, who is the official historian and genealogist of Bani. And all of the, most of the, most of the genealogies go back to the Canary Islands and to Spain and Portugal. So some of the customs that I focused on were marriage arrangements, dietary practices, weekend customs and rituals, family purity during menstruation and childbirth, Holy Week and Easter, death, mourning, superstitions, and their ethics. And one of the, one of the most important things about the Bani Levels is that they are endogamous. They marry amongst themselves. And I wanted to I wanted to prove this oral tradition and this actual tradition through genetics. So in order to do that, I had to compare their mitochondrial DNA. I focus, I chose to focus on the women and because I wanted to I wanted to prove that to show a correlation between their 
traditions that they practice and transmit to their children, the women transmit to their children, and their DNA to see where they came from, to see if it, if it correlates with the genealogies and their customs. So I had to compare various studies from Iberia, Central Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. The 19 test subjects that I used um, had to be, were chosen according to three criteria. So they have to have roots for more than three generations in Bani, so they could have not been recent migrants to this, the town. They have to have endogamous marriages along the maternal lineage, and they must have at least two of the surnames of the original settler surname, which are all here. For the control subject, I chose to, to use 11 people from all over the Caribbean and Latin America in order to show, uh, uh, to, to be able to compare the study. So from the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Honduras, Mexico, and Portugal. And I used, as a platform, I used the Family Tree DNA um, uh, platform in order to do this. So we tested hypervariable region one and two of mitochondrial DNA. And these are the results for the control group. We were able to see that this represents basically Latin America. So you have have the group A, C, L3, D, H, L1, and C, and L2, D, which practically shows an admixture of Africa, Native Americans, and European. Now, in our study, we found that there were two women who do not know that they're related to each other who were from Kappa group H. And so this represents, from the test group of 19, represents about 10.5%. According to Dr. Behar's study, 2008, this uh, graph shows Hapa group H, which is the green in each one of these communities, which is, represents the highest percentage of each one of these in, in mitochondrial DNA. According to the family tree DNA database, these are the matches of these two women from Bani who do not know that they're related to each other. These are the number of the matches according to last year. It may have changed now, maybe more. Uh, this amount of women or people who identify as Sephardi in the countries they're from. So you can see the largest one, or the largest matches are in Morocco following Turkey. Next, we have another, um, another matriarch, which I call matriarch A in the study. There were three women who are from this uh, Habra group, and which represents 15.8% of, of the sample. What's interesting about this is that many anthropologists say that Habra group A is strictly or automatically um, demonstrating that it's from the Native American population. However, in the Dominican Republic, there was a study in 2001 which was tested on 27 bone samples of the Taino population. And in this genetic study, only, only half the group C and D were found. There were no A and no B. So that's, that could suggest that half the group A in our study was not from the Tainos, came from somewhere else. Now, according to Ashkenazi populations and some studies that were performed in 2013 by Costa. Um, we can see here the percentages, which are very small, of those Kappa Group A, which are found. So the highest will be among the French Jews, and overall 1% in West Europe. What's interesting about this is historically, um, the, the 13th century, many Ashkenazim went to Spain for the same reason why a lot of people migrate today to the United States, because it was the center of learning and business. So this Hapa group A that in our study could represent a migration of Ash a small minority of Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews that went to Spain and later on went to the New World. Next, we have an other matriarchs, which I call C, D, and F for purposes of simplification. So the Hapa groups that they conform to where L2A, L3E, L3E2B, 
and three L3F. Each one of these had two women that matched each other, and none of these women know that they are related to each other. Now, according to uh, various studies in the Canary Islands, there's a small percentage of these L haplogroups of sub Sub-Saharan haplogroups in the Canary, Canary Islands and also in Northwest Africa, namely Morocco and Algeria, as you can see in this uh, map. The darker the color, the higher the percentage. And this map shows us here where the, the highest percentage of L1B and L2B. So L1B we see in Andalusia, which is southern Spain. And L2B, we see it amongst the Moroccan, Ber the, excuse me, the Egyptian Berbers. According to the Behar study in 2008, um, there were small percentages, which are here, found of the L haplogroup, so the sub-Saharan haplogroups among the Mizrahi, or the Oriental Jewish population. Next, we have another matriarch, which is Jay. So there was one woman who, who was matriarch uh, uh, Jay from this, from this hyper group, and representing 5.3% of our sample. This woman matched with the family tree DNA database, matched 15 Jewish women from Iraq, two Sephardic women from Morocco, one Sephardic woman from Turkey, and one Mizrahi Yemenite. In all of this study, at the end, we the results, we saw that 68% of the test population descends from, descend from six matriarchs. So that shows a high level of endogamy, which conf confirms the oral tradition that cousins marry each other and an uncle marries his niece, or in the case, in other cases where a man is married to a woman, the woman passes away and he marries the sister. So all of these practices are found in Banit. Finally, we can conclude that the half of groups that stood out were J, H, L1B, L32B, indicating a remarkable signature of near and Middle Eastern ancestry joined with some degree of North African and European admixture. The haplogroup pattern among the Banilejos demonstrates that the most important Jewish period of the family lineages are J and H. Reason being is because those are the ones that are mainly found among the Iraqi and Azerbaijani Jews in the Middle Eastern populations like the Druze, Palestinians, and Bedouins. Finally, these data confirm that the Banilejos, due to their marriage practices, have kept not only the cultural memory of their Jewish origin throughout the centuries, but also a significant amount of their ancestral genetic signature. And if you would like to read about the, their actual customs and how they live, which is um, the book that I wrote, it will be uh, published soon. You can find it on, on, through Amazon in about three weeks. And uh, this book, describes everything in detail, all their customs and superstitions, and a halachic analysis as to why they may be Jews. And they have no idea about this. I have not even presented this. So you are the second audience that is seen uh, here in these results. Now.